So this video will have a quick explanation on cross coloration for PIV uh, technology. And in this tutorial, we address two questions. The first is how cross correlation is performed, and second is how to determine the particle displacement based on the cross coloration you are doing. And okay, so why I uh, specifically pick out the cross coloration out because when I started with PIV, I was a bit confused um, about the mathematical background about this. Uh, cross coloration operation and uh, it took me quite a few years to understand so uh, I use this opportunity to pass the, uh, my experience and you know, how to I, I'm trying to uh, explain it in a kind of straightforward way and illustrative way and I help you to understand much quicker okay now we start with a uh, a 1D window, which means usually we have 2D windows, right? You take image and that's 2D, but now let's assume we are doing 1D PIV. Okay, so this is window one in here. And uh, so let me cross it. Okay, we have window one in here. And apparently we have one, two, three, four, five pixels and five 1D pixels and apparently the particle recorded are here and we it takes over three pixels and the <coughs> and the center of the particle is at here okay and then we have window two and apparently it's the same particle it's moving towards here right we have again the same identical intensity distribution one three one so if we plot it use this uh, triangle as uh, the the particle intensity so the peak is here and then on the side it's uh, a lower intensity and then it moves towards uh, it moves when we record in, into window two and now if we compare window one and window two and we will know if we count the displacement of the particle centroid it will move two uh, pixels is that right okay we can read it so that's a centroid and then that's a displacement okay so using our eyes we can read out the displacement is two pixels but what how the, how can the computer do this work? So how the computer does, and that is cross coloration. So the answer is cross coloration. Okay, now we do the cross coloration of window one and window two. And so let's see, we first lock window two and move window one. So let's see how the um, cross coloration works. As I said, this is uh, this is window two and this is window one. Now we are locking window two at at here and we are shifting window one. So in the cross coloration procedure, we need to overlap the window pixels. So first of all, uh, we have one pixel overlapped, and then once they are overlapped, we just uh, multiply multiply these two elements okay so in here and because it's zero overlapped with zero then the result is zero okay so we put it uh, below we have a register in here we have a register in here and eventually it will become the cross coloration result and um, okay so now just now we have one overlapped now we move window one towards the right hand side further and apparently now we get two pixels overlapped so what happens we um, in this case what we do is once the pixels are overlapped we multiply multiply them together and okay so we have zero times zero and for here we get zero times zero okay so we get two multiplications then we we need to do the summation of 
about these two multiplications and eventually it's showing in here this is operation and then the result is zero so we register this zero and we move window one further one pixel to the right and now we have three pixels overlapped and follow the previous procedure we have this operation so three multiple uh, three multiplications and also summation okay we register this zero again and we move window one further so now we have four overlapped windows and the result is zero still and you may ask when do we end when do we finish this operation so if you're smart enough you can guess now so until there's no overlap once it travels the window one travels towards the right okay we have several more operations to do and now it's fully overlapped and again on the right hand side that's a result and it is one so we just put it below okay so it's not done yet right because we can still move further towards the right and there's still overlap okay so this is what we've done just now and i put it there for your reference and I move the window one towards the right further. Okay, so now, now the overlap becomes less, four pixels, and the result is six. And so you can do the practice. So we put it below and move further towards the right, three pixels overlap, and the result is 11. So it's great. We see that um, the magnitude becomes larger. And we put it there, put 11 below. And we move window one towards the right further. Now there are two uh, pixels overlapped and we get the result six. And we, again, we can, we still have one, uh, one step to do, right? And okay, so for now we get one pixel. That's a final step. And one times one is one. So we put it here. So, and if we move, move window one further towards the right, and there will be no overlap, so we don't take that into account. Okay, so looking at the lower side, and we get this, uh, re that's a, actually the cross coloration result. And okay, so we go to the next slide now, and we have window one in here. So this is window one, and this is window two. If we do the cross coloration, this is cr cross coloration result on the on the right hand side. Okay, so we are interested in here. So you have 11, which is the largest magnitude in the cross coloration result. And also we are interested in this, in this location and because this is center of this 1D window, right? On the left, there are four pixels. On the right, there are four pixels. So before we recognize that, there's a two pixel displacement about this particle. And the, the peak intensity is also two pixels from the center on the right. And so this is actually equals, so this number actually, and also the orientation equals the particle displacement. So using the cross coloration, we can recognize the, or calculate or retrieve the particle displacement, which is two pixels towards the right. And now let's look at the, uh, some property, one property of this uh, 1D cross coloration as written below. So the cross coloration of two 1D windows containing n pixels, the cross coloration result of this uh, 1D windows will contain two times n minus one pixels. Is that right? So for example, in here, our example, we have five pixels and eventually we get the cross coloration result has nine pixels. So that's uh, one property. And also we do the cross coloration, the computer can do the cross coloration and then by identifying the peak intensity and compare the location of the peak intensity towards the center. So you can, uh, the computer can retrieve the 
displacement. So that's what the computer can taking it, take advantage of the cross coloration. Okay. So usually we use we can use conveniently use MATLAB to do the cross coloration. It's just one word X core. So this is a MATLAB script I put. So for now we have exactly same uh, window as we had before. So we have window one and window two. Window two. So if we do the cross coloration, we just type X core w2 w1 window 2 window 1 that's the way we do the cross coloration 1d and the 2d will be slightly different i will show you later and we then we enter do a press enter button so that's the result we have and if you, if you compare with the previous result i did by hand so it's the same result and again so here is a center and this is a pig and this is 2d pixel uh two pixel displacement okay i believe you understand what what do we do with a 1d window cross coloration and how do we do it and how do we do it by hand how do we do it by uh, computer coding and how can we relay the cross coloration with piv how to get the vector right okay so you may be curious now 1D is not realistic, right? Usually in actual PIV, we do 2D images. And how can we do 2D window? So now I'm giving an example in here. So we have window one and a window two. So this is a 2D window, three by three. And now if we observe the intensity distribution, we will see the particle centroid is in here. And in window two, the same, the peak is in here. So if we compare window one and window two, their uh, intensity distributions will find the particle displacement is likely this way. Is it along its diagonal towards the right? Okay. So let's see. How do we do cross coloration and how do we use cross coloration map to uh, determine the particle displacement? Okay, and similarly, we need to generate overlaps and because in 2D windows, uh, we need to have two dimensional overlaps and uh, there's overlap in the extra dimension. So we first let one pixel uh, dimension. This is window one in here. The green is window one, blue is window two and they have one pixel overlapped again we just multiply them okay we get the arrow and because it's far more steps than 1d i just jump in between so we move towards the right and then we can have uh this call uh, this row so that's a result once we shift the window one allow them to have one row um, overlapped okay so once the first row is fully overlapped and then we need to overlap move the shift downwards window one downwards allow them to have more overlaps so shift from left to the right allow them to have the whole sequence and then we can have the second row and then we shift downwards further until there's only one row, last row overlap, and eventually, so you can practice later if you want, it's a bit tedious, and we have this cross coloration result for the 2D window. And essentially in, in PIV, we have much larger window instead of three by three, right? Although we prefer three by three, and we can get a higher spatial resolution, but in practice, it's not very possible. Uh, maybe you can use some of coloration that allows you to to use smaller window size but usually it's 16 by 16 if you're lucky or 32 by 32 i would say 64 64 uh, is still quite good size but it's you see it's much bigger okay so we have the cross coloration result in here and now let's do some observation in the next slide. okay so let me 
finish the animation. So we have window one cross colorated with window two, and we get this cross coloration map. If similar as a 1D property, and we can see this is window window one and window two are three by three uh, pixels and the result is five by five. So the cross coloration of two 2D windows containing n square pixels, the cross coloration result contains two n minus one square pixels. And also there's a, another interesting property. It is if we draw a diagonal line here, it's not very precise. You can see the coloration map, the, uh, the intensity is symmetrical to this diagonal line. So that's the two properties of the 2D cr cross coloration. Okay, coming back to the PID problem. So before, by comparing window one and window two, we know the particle displays the two pixels. And again, in here, similar as, uh, as a 1D cross coloration, we first identify the center. So identify the center and identify the uh, peak intensity and then we do the comparison. So exactly it's, uh, um, the displacement as we observed on the raw uh, window one and a window two. So this is how we make the PIV algorithm making use of the cross coloration map to identify the displacement or the vector. So the vector is two comma two. So that's the displacement in pixel. So in X is two pixels, in Y is two pixels. Good. Okay, in MATLAB, and the code is slightly different, and we use Xcore2 to do the cross coloration. And now this is a script I can I used to generate this cross coloration map. So it's exactly the same window, window one, window two, and then we use Xcore2 to do the cross coloration. So that's how we can do conveniently through MATLAB. And this is what we have for today. And I uh, hope you can uh, enjoy this cross-coloration for PIV applications. Good.